Hi there, Sugar Snaps. Today I want to go over the tools you'll need for wet felting and some materials. You'll need a couple things to get started in wet felting and then you can add more tools to your um, smaller kit as you go as you want to experiment with more tools. So first off you'll want a towel to lay on your workspace and um, it soaks up extra water as you're working. You'll need soap. I have a bar of olive oil soap. I like using the nat more natural olive oil soaps because the detergent in them isn't as harsh as some other soaps. Um, so it's better on your skin, it's better on the fiber that you're felting, um, and I just enjoy the, the process of working with the olive oil soap. You'll also need a piece of bubble wrap or a bamboo mat for um, felting um, flat felt or 3D objects. I like to use a combination of both bubble wrap and the bamboo mat in my wet felting um, because it just gives me more options in what I'm um, doing. I have a kettle over here. This is to bring water to um, a high heat. I don't bring it to boil because I need to be able to handle it with my hands um, and I don't want to burn myself. So I would advise you to bring it to uh, a warm enough temperature that it will shock the wool to, in order to cause the felting, but not so warm or hot that you burn yourself. So just be aware of that. Um, and the other main material that you'll need is wool fiber, and that can be alpaca fiber or sheep's fiber. Uh, and I have several different wool fibers here to go over. I'll go over with those with you in a minute. Um, but you'll need some sort of wool fiber that felts well um, when wet felting. A couple other tools that I like to have on hand are a spray bottle. This is for spraying cool water onto whatever I'm felting. I have a measuring cup here. This can hold hot water or cold water or just be available um, as I'm working. And a small container. This I use for um, batching small felt balls. Um, if I want to felt multiple balls at the same time, I can start them out and then throw them in here with some hot cold water, slosh it around, and um, just do a bulk wet felting process. I also have this bin here that I use to put cold water in or hot water in and um, just have access to more water on my work surface as I'm working. Before I start talking about wool, I want to mention really quick that there are super wash wools on the market and this one is a merino super wash and they are made so that they won't felt so that you can spin and knit or weave with them and they won't felt um, your finished product. So be aware if you are trying to create felt, don't buy a super wash wool because that will defeat the purpose of your project. So don't buy superwash wool for wet felting. I'm gonna go over some wool fibers you can use for wet felting, and this is not an exhaustive list. I have a printable on my website. You can find the link to that below in the description. And print this off just as a guide of the different types of fibers to use and their staple length, whether they dye well, um, the texture of the fiber, and what the finished felt texture will most likely be like. So I'm gonna to refer to this as I go over these with you. So first off on the list, I have a Coriadale, and this is a um, white Coriadale. It has a three to six inch staple length. The staple length is the length of each individual fiber. So they vary throughout the uh, length of the roving, um, but typically it's a three to six inch length. This is very dyeable. It produces nice clear colors when it is dyed naturally or with chemical dyes. Um, it's a medium fine with a clear crimp and it has a well-defined lock. Here, this roving, you can't tell what the lock would have looked like, but it does have some good crimp through it. So um, the finished felt from a Coriadale is most often a medium roughness and uh, creates a nice dense felt. So next on the list is the Jacob fiber. And Jacob is a splotch sheep, so it comes in lots of different colors. The coat is um, lots of different colors. And 
I have here two different colors, a black and a gray that have been separated. So these are heathered, a heather gray and a heather black. So there's some lighter and darker fibers throughout this roving. Um, this is a coarser fiber. It has a three to seven inch staple length. It is, um, comes in heather blacks, browns, grays, and sometimes even reds. Um, so it's not as easy to dye because it comes in a lot of natural colors. Um, so often people use it as the natural color, but you can also over dye it if you want to, to um, try to get a muted color. If you want to dye over the gray with like a, a matter root or a red dye, um, you would just get a more grayish red uh, finished wool. This creates um, a dense felt that has a slightly scratchy surface. Um, not super scratchy, it'd still be comfortable for outer garments, but um, would also withstand lots of wear for like handbags and that kind of, those kinds of pieces. Um, it's, it, the, the characteristic of the fiber or the fiber texture is dramatically different depending on the sheep that it's shorn off of and where it is on the sheep. So um, there's a lot of variety in Jacob sheep. Next on the list is the Romney, that's this guy. So a Romney is a pretty dense fiber. I like spinning with it because it's um, rather silky, even though it has um, some coarser texture, it's really silky. And when wet felting, it's nice to use because that silkiness comes through in the felt as well. It um, has a four to eight inch staple length. Again, that's the length of the individual fibers. Um, it is really dyeable because it often comes in cream and so you can dye right over the cream color and get nice clear colors. Um, the coarseness also varies like the Jacob sheep varies depending on the sheep and where, where, they're, where they live and um, variables like that. Finished felt will be a dense felt with a slightly fuzzy texture and will be good for durable pieces as well as garments, garment pieces. I don't have a Cheviot um, sample here today, but that is a four to five inch length staple. It can come in a variety of colors. You can easily dye it, dye over it, but it's not as clear as other wools. So you'll get slightly more muted colors when you natural dye or, or chemical dye with it. It has a dense defined crimp and um, varies from coarse to almost fine throughout the, the um, texture of the fiber. And it will create a coarse felt with a high density. So that's a good one for um, durable pieces as well. So now moving into some finer fibers, we have the Blue Face Leicester. I have that, that one here. This is a really nice, silky, soft fiber. I love um, touching this fiber because it's just so cozy. Um, so this one has a three to six inch staple length, so slightly shorter than some of the other ones. Um, it's clear color, so it will take dyes well, and it's highly crimped and has a lustrous, it has kind of a sheen to it. So when you, not, when you dye it over it, um, your dyes will, the, the color will have a nice natural sheen to it. Um, and it creates a soft, durable felt. So this is a good, a great one for garment pieces or scarves or things you're gonna wear close to the skin. Okay, next up is the Shetland. This again is another slightly, this is slightly rougher than the Leicester, but um, it also has a nice luster and sheen to it. This is a high durability with a soft crimp. There's less crimp in the fiber and the staple length varies dramatically depending on um, the location of where the sheep live. This creates a soft and durable felt with a smooth lustrous texture. Next up is Merino. Merino is one that you can find in commercial garments often. Um, Smart wool and other uh, brands, Icebreaker, use merino wool to create um, garments. And it's a very soft, very cozy wool fiber. Uh, it's very comfortable to wear against the skin, so it creates a nice 
uh, wearable felt. And this one has a two to five inch staple length, so very short staple length. Um, it comes in white and you can dye over that white and it creates beautiful clear colors um, from your dyeing. Also, the, the crimp is high. It's a lightweight and has a fine and soft texture. And you will create a lightweight, soft felt from this. Merino takes slightly more felting. It's the process takes a little bit more work to get it to felt because it's so fine and so soft. Um, so just be aware of that when using Merino. You'll have to work at it a little bit harder than like say a Romney or a Coriadale that more naturally wants to tangle and create the felt material. And lastly, alpaca fiber. Alpacas come in lots of different lengths from two to 11 inches. And um, the texture also varies depending on the type of alpaca and, and where the alpaca is from. Um, and it creates a soft felt. I would suggest combining alpaca with a one of the other wool fibers because the lengths vary so much, you'll end up with a very hairy uh, piece of felt. You can definitely just felt alpaca fiber and create a nice piece of fabric, but just be aware that the surface is probably going to be more fuzzy than some of the other fibers will create. One more thing that I have here as a suggestion is a pair of rubber dishwashing gloves. You can wear these as you're doing some felting, and if you're doing lots of felting, I would advise wearing these because your hands can get dried out from working with all the soap and the water and the different temperatures and it will dry out your skin. So wearing gloves if you're working on a long project is a good idea to protect them. You can even put like coconut oil or olive oil on your hands before you slide them in and um, then your hands will be nice and soft when you remove them at the end of your project. If you are working uh, without gloves, which I often do, um, just be aware that at the end, your cuticles will be a little more tender and um, your hands will be slightly drier. So make sure to put on a moisturizer or um, just be aware your skin will be drier and it would thank you for some moisturizer. So be aware of that. I hope you found this video helpful. Like and subscribe below if you'd like to see more on wet felting, spinning, natural dyeing, and other fiber arts. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.